Hi, I'm Dave Rice. This is my presentation about debugging DB. <laughs> uh, to give you an introduction to uh, the concept of debugging, I found that most uh, definitions of it overlapped a bit, but they generally all included these three co concepts of like identifying a problem, trying to diagnose it to define what it is, to express it more clearly, and then trying to resolve the problem. So in the DB Rescue project, uh, we kind of divide it up into these four components, uh, which are all independent challenges. We have to develop tools to capture data from DB. Uh, we have to analyze the resulting data that comes over and uh, package it into a container and provide guidance for the user. Um, maybe like, 15 or even 10 years ago, we could use projects like Final Cut 7 uh, or Live Capture Plus or DB Grab. There used to be a nice variety of tools for capturing DB, but um, since nobody is really creating any media on DB anymore, uh, those, those software projects have mostly been abandoned or dropped support for capturing uh, from tape. So it was uh, a, a good challenge for us to try to create new software or new define new workflows to capture DV from a tape into a modern computer. Um, so to talk about analysis, I want to give a bit of an overview of how DV is arranged on a tape. Um, when you put in the DV tape, um, which looks like this, you get this like tiny cassette that you put into the tape. The tape is unwound and put around a, a drum that has uh, two sets of readers on these two different um, edges of the drum, uh, here on the, the bottom of the drum and on the top. So these are two separate readers that interact with the tape and read different parts of it as it passes by. Um, this, is this is important in analyzing the results of the work or trying to get an accurate transfer because Often DB tapes are dusty, the, the decks are old, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for contamination or debris. So um, often like if this deck does get dirty, then one of the readers will start to fail while the other one is uh, doing okay. So the rate of failure from one reader to another will, will vary in a contaminated deck. When we look at the tape as a cross section, um, uh, it has these kind of diagonal sets of data. And then for each DB frame, there is either 10 or 12 diagonal stripes on the tape that represent one single frame. Uh, so for this diagonal stripe, uh, when you break it down a bit more, it's arranged into video, audio, uh, subcode, which is containing all the time code and the navigation data. And then there's also like um, metadata about like your camera's characteristics. Um, the, you know, the audio settings. Uh, and if you're starting or stopping your camera, like your white balance information is all stored in there. So uh, DB also contains a bunch of parity data on the tape, which is important because the deck is able to read the video blocks one by one, compare it to the little checksum that's on the tape, and it will know if it got the data correct or incorrect. Uh, if it detects an error, it will conceal that error. So here's an example of a tape playing uh, where you can see parts of the frame stops moving because it has an error from reading the tape. Um, so in one of our methods, like if I take the blocks of the frame that have an error and replace them with white, it will show like this. Um, I really liked seeing this kind of view of uh, DV as it presented like a much more like film-like uh, experience of interacting with the errors, where you could see how the physical damage for the tape could like inter interact linearly with multiple frames. Uh, this is another example of like a head clog on the tape where one of the sets of readers is completely clogged for a few frames while the other is, is functioning. So half of the frame stops moving altogether. Here that frame is, uh, here those errors are copied over in yellow. Uh, but if you if you watched it as the deck was presenting it, you'd see like where this is just gets completely stuck. So half of the frame is moving and half of it gets stuck into place. So in our DB Rescue project, we made this open source software and tried to make different ways to visualize those errors. So we did it on a graph that shows the percentage of error per frame and in a table that also shows the percentage of error per frame and a bunch of uh, notable events. Uh, so it gives you information like the time code, the audio and video settings, the camera date, and um, the error rate, uh, while also showing the frame. So this is another case where the playback deck 
uh, is failing to read half the frame and it's concealing it. So that's why you've got this kind of broad striped pattern onto the, onto the video frame. Uh, so when, so in our capture processes that we uh, document and recommend, we are transferring uh, from one tape into one DV file, uh, but, but often that DV file is uh, not in the healthiest condition. Some of the frames are damaged. They might not be able to clearly express their own metadata, or they could contain um, significant transitions from frame to frame, like the camera person could switch from 4.3 to 16 by 9, or from 2 to 4 audio channels. Uh, you know, the, the frames could be diverse and variable across a single recording. Uh, but we still capture into one DV file, and then we package it up later to add clarity to what we have gathered. So in uh, a DV, in a DV file, um, the DV encoding is like a compound codec in that it's not acting purely as a video codec, but as a compound codec in that it's containing multiple different types of information all encapsulated together into one encoded stream. Uh, so <clears throat> you have the video, the audio, metadata captions, chapter information, error information, um, and time code, like all intermingled together into one encoded, um, one encoding, you know, where they can't really be picked apart separately. It's uh, just all together, like in the same way it would be on a film print where you have the image and the soundtrack and the edge codes like all in a structure that's attached together. <clears throat> so um, a lot of um, video players aren't able to support the variability that DV supports, such as uh, like aspect ratio changes. So if we if we took the DV as it was and we just like wrapped it into a Matroska container or a QuickTime container, it would be difficult to document and to sustain the variability of some of these um, settings. So for instance, in this recording, it changes from 16 by 9 to 4.3. So for some of these significant changes uh, in our packaging tools, we decided to make it um, split the files by default. So if you have one file that contains a change like this, it will make one change per transition. Let's skip over a few slides as I'm low on time. <clears throat> uh, but DV Packager is able to split files according to those significant changes in audio prop audiovisual properties, like changes uh, in audio channel count or aspect ratio. But it can also give you options to split files based on like pressing the record button or time code jumps or recording time jumps. So if you have 17 shots on one DV, you could package it into 17 files or keep it as one um, package file the chapters that document all those portions. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the things we found in capturing DV. Um, this, this is a tape I have uh, of my friend Ben at Dunkin' Donuts, and I captured this six times. And where the errors were, I had them highlighted in yellow. And I think this clip really emphasizes that the errors will happen in different places. Each copy has about the same rate of errors, but you know, the dust bunnies and the dirt contamination move around. So from one capture to another, uh, the rate of errors is roughly the same, but it's in different places. Uh, so in, in the work we did, oh, sorry. <laughs> in the work we were doing, we wanted to add a process to merge these all together to take the best video blocks from each frame and consolidate it into one better output. Um, because like we could take these and, and create, create like one file that represented the best of everything. Um, so it takes like six bad copies and make one better copy. So we realized this gave us an opportunity to kind of redefine how a deck and a computer collaborate. Normally it's this assembly line where the deck sends frames and the computer just simply tries to receive the frames and document them to a file. Uh, but we found we could make this a bit more interactive where the computer is uh, coordinating the entire process. So the computer, through deck control can ask the machine to start playing frames and, if it, and assess it as it's being read. So if the analysis shows that there is some damage, we can ask the, the deck to rewind and play it again, send a second copy, compare the two, take a preference or merge the two, and then continue writing it out. Uh, so we can have one continuous file coming out, but it's based on the work of assessment and like double takes and rereadings of the same tape to make one better output. Uh, so this is um, kind of a side-by-side -side of an experimental version of our capture tool, where it's showing how the software is asking the deck to rewind and reread certain frames in order to get uh, 
multiple copies of the same frames into a buffer, analyze them, merge them together, and to continue to the output. Uh, so this was a finding we were very happy with and started this uh, successor project called the Digital Video Commander Project, where we'll be applying this to other formats as well. And I think with that, I'll go to thanks, and then I'll turn my slides off, jump to questions for the 30 seconds or how, yeah. Um, but thanks for listening to my hastily uh, shared presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. It was really nice to see. And uh, there were a lot of people who wish they had a DV deck in their homes still to play with the stuff. Uh, enjoying this deep dive was a very nice comment. Um, uh, so yeah, really nice. And um, there was there was a question, but I think it was answered because so, uh, many people just uh, yeah, I saw that some, uh, some links into the, the, the chat as well. Um, I saw got... Steve was asking what hardware is supported yeah, and yeah, uh, to get DV from a deck into a computer, like specifically requires using like a firewire cable, um, like the firewire cable as a transmission cable and the DV encoding were, um, you know, kind of developed and, and shared together as technologies. Like there are other ways to get video out of a DV deck, uh, like to play it out as an analog output or SDI, but it would lose a bunch of the embedded information that would help us facilitate the analysis. Um, fortunately, like one of the advantage things we're taking advantage of in DV is that it um, the DV deck will contain all of its own restoration notes. So it will say mm -hmm. what parts of the frame were concealed or like where specifically it had to drop out audio because the audio on the tape was filled with errors. Um, so by like, use, using all this information, we can we have this opportunity to uh, combine multiple readings of the same tape or to note specifically where uh, errors are. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, Dave. There are a few more questions still in the in the chat. So please, if you would just like to uh, go over them and and see if you can answer some of them, that would be great. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you so much.